How hard should your hard workouts be? We often hear no pain, no gain. You see videos and pictures of people on Instagram and social media being completely and utterly exhausted after their workout, as if this was the goal. Well, let's break it down, the science and the practice of how hard our hard workouts should be. So first off, the easiest thing to do in the world is to create fatigue. So make someone so tired that they're going to be exhausted lying on the ground is simple. You can do it in a number of ways. You basically go really intense with not a lot of rest and you'll be tired. You could also do it very, very intense with longer rest and you can still get them to that point. But the point of training is not to experience extreme fatigue. It's to embarrass the body to adapt in a specific direction. Again, the point of training we apply a stimulus. That stimulus makes our brain and our body go, oh crap, we're not quite as prepared as we thought for this. So we better adapt so that next time this comes around, we're prepared. The simplest example is if you go lift some weights, you create some micro tears in the muscle fiber. Muscle fiber comes, the muscle comes back, repairs that, makes it stronger. In endurance events, we train for a while, we get low muscle glycogen and the muscle fiber often serves as one of the stimulus to increase mitochondria, which makes us able to handle things a little bit better next time we're in that state or push to that limit. The key here is that we need to activate a signaling pathway, say, hey, I'm embarrassed, but not overload it. Because often overloading backfires. We don't have the resources to repair and strengthen the damage to build up. Or we dig ourselves in such a hole that there's so much damage in so many places to repair, replace essentially our body says, hey, I can't prioritize everything. We're in a bad state. Like, we're not going to adapt. This is when you get into overtraining and all that fun stuff. So for most of the time, our goal is to embarrass the body, to make it aware, to challenge it enough, to push outside of our kind of homeostatic or allostatic load just enough so that we come back and repair and grow so we can handle it next time. Now, there are situations where we want to go to failure. Let's look at weightlifting, for example. There's some a bunch of research on training to failure versus not. All honesty, it's all over the place. Some recent meta-analysis says that training to failure gives you a little boost in terms of hypertrophy. But other really good recent research says that there's no difference. The bottom line is that basically it would make a small degree of difference if it does. And often the degree of difference depends on the adaptation you're after. So, for example, a recent study in 2023 found that training closer to failure causes similar gains in maximum strength as when you train further away from failure, but it allowed for more hypertrophy and then less in terms of what we generally colloquial call power. So things like a squat jump height. And that makes sense. Train to failure. Maybe you get a little boost in hypertrophy, some muscle size, but that probably will take away from your power output because those last couple reps are going to be not the stimulus you needed for power, which is force output over a shorter amount of time. That rep is going to take longer. Not as good as stimulus. This is why when we look at sprinting or doing anything like that, we often have fatigue as the enemy. When we're looking at neural adapt adaptations in that regard, you don't want to get fatigued. This is why sprinters take so much rest. Okay, How hard our workouts are depends on the desired adaptation. Now, I'm going to speak in generalities here. Okay, But the way I look at it is, for the desired adaptation, meaning is it neural, power-based, speed-based? Is it tolerance-based? 
meaning we need to increase our buffering capacity. So we're going to have to go into the well of fatigue. Is it more endurance or aerobic based? Is it fuel utilization based? Meaning glycogen is the same thing we're trying to get used to and adapt to in terms of long runs or marathon fat utilization. We could go through the gamut. But basically, the general rule of thumb is the more speed power orientated, the more fresh you want to be, the more it is in terms of buffering tolerance, we can dig a little further into fatigue. And the more aerobic or endurance side of things is generally you don't need to go to the well that often. Okay, probably get in the way. The second thing I look at is okay, our desired ad adaptation, number one. Number two, how long will it take me to recover from this stress? The further down into the well I go, the longer it takes to recover. So what does that mean? I dig a big hole, but now I have to wait three, four, five, six days before I can do a hard workout again. So my cumulative adaptation versus being able to bounce back and do a workout, hard workout again three days later cumulatively, I'm losing stuff. It's not always a good trade-off. So think of how long is it, does it take to recover? Third and final thing I consider, is it better to stack a lot of small pushes out of this kind of homeostasis or a few big pushes where we go close to broke for that adaptation? Generally, we want lots of small to moderate pushes. That's just what the research and training shows. Every once in a while, a lot of times for two reasons, psychologically, and then sometimes physiologically when we're stuck, the, we're recovered, but we're stuck on a performance plateau. We can go what my high school coach called, go see God, to go to the well work. Now I'm going to caution you. Even in well-trained athletes, you're looking at go to the well workout in runners maybe once a, a year, maybe twice a year, once a season. Much more than that, you're probably in, in for it. And that gets me to the basic general rule of thumb. As way back in the 1960s, Arthur Lydiard said it best, the famed distance coach, said, you should finish your hard intervals with one more rep in the tank. Meaning if you've got 10 by 460, you should get through that 10, 460 seconds and feel like, oh man, that was tough. But if I had to, I could eke out one more rep. How close do you get to that one more rep? Again, depends on the, st the stimulus and adaptation, but it's a good rule of thumb. Other things you look for as a coach or an athlete, and I see this all the time with novices and beginners, is your pacing during that workout. If you can get through the workout where you're hitting 60 point, 60 point, 59 point, 61 point for those 400, so they're all relatively around each other, and you get to the last one and you're like, okay, I, I was maintaining, I was able to still keep it 60, 59, you probably paced, that was probably an appropriate workout. If on the other hand, you see those pacing going backwards, Meaning you're 60, 59, 60, 61, 62, 62, 63. And then you come back with the last rep because you're finally done at 60. Or what we'd call the, the JV kick at the last rep where you go out, slow down in the middle, and then kick like a hero home. That generally tells you that workout was too challenging for you. You wrote it too difficult. You didn't pace it well. So when we talk about hard workouts, it's not only do we go to the well or not, is the workout as written a just manageable challenge? Meaning, yeah, it embarrassed my body a little bit. It pushed me mentally and physically, but I got through it. Now, it's important to say we're talking about the hard workouts, the one or two, sometimes three, depending on the athlete level, hard specific hard sessions during the week. We're not talking the easy days, the recovery days, even the long runs, really. So when it comes to working out hard, again, we have to look at what the adaptation we're after is. Is there a downside to pushing to failure besides in 
injury and then adaptation. How long does it take to recover, bounce back from? And for this stimulus, is it better to be consistent over the long haul for a while? Or do we need a slight, maybe psychological shift to see God? And I think it's really important here because when we go to failure on some workouts, there's a downside to it. So let's take a couple examples. If we do too much high intensity interval training, we're going to talk 800 mile pace, relatively short rest. We're feeling that that burn in the muscles, the acidosis. If we do that too frequently, it shifts the seesaw of endurance. Our brain goes, oh crap, we've got to get really good at buffering this stuff, working glycolytically, anaerobically, prioritize that, and our endurance capacity goes down. Okay, this is why often when people do too much speed work at the end of the season, when they're trying to peak, sometimes they don't get that boost in performance because their aerobic ability has shifted too much. Similarly, on the aerobic side, if we go to failure on a workout like a lactate threshold or a tempo run, where we're running half marathon, 10 mile pace, somewhere in that range, and the goal is essentially to when we look at lactate threshold, we're at a point where we're either barely seeing lactate increase over time or it's relatively a steady state. If what happens is we push that, keep pushing, 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 what happens is we change that adaptation. Because when we go to failure, what happens during those workouts is we've gone from trying to push the threshold up, from pushing the threshold up to going over it and trying to pull it up at the same time, which there's nothing wrong with trying to pull the threshold up. But if the goal was to ride that line or ride below that line and embarrass the body by getting it used to just being just below that threshold, the training adaptation has gone out the window to a degree. You're still going to adapt to a degree, but you've shifted it a little. So keep that in mind. So there you go. How hard should the workouts be? For most workouts, again, yeah, adaptation matters, athlete matters, but for 95% of them, follow the Lydiard rule. Have one more rep in the tank. Don't be the Instagram hero. It doesn't pay off.